So you think you saw it in the mirror, and that's why you think you'll never have kids? Oh, I know I'm never having children. Uh, because you think that they'll just have the same imaginary sickness. They would. We all do. Nell was delusional, depressed. Luke's an addict. Shirley is a control freak, and Theo's basically a clenched fist with hair. The whole fucking family is on the brink of a breakdown, seeing things that aren't there, hearing things that aren't there. And that shit happened after the house. It's not the house. There's something wrong with our goddamn brains. So yeah, I'm never having children. I made sure. What? Vasectomy. <gasps> right out of college. And it was the right call, believe me, because if I ever doubted it, some of the bullshit what? I'm hallucinating this week. You really did? Pause. Hold the fuck up. He had a vasectomy out of college? And what, he didn't tell me? He's pretending they're going for what? Gosh, dang it! I am so mad right now! I'm about to lose my shit with him. That is outrageous. Two odd years they've been trying. He, he didn't say in that two years. Oh, I know why. <sighs> Play. You didn't tell her. You didn't tell her. Wow. She wanted kids, I knew that. Thinking I'll tell her later, now is not the time. <sighs> this sickness already killed two of us, might kill a third tonight. Almost half. Be almost half of us. <sighs> but you want to tell me more about the kite in the line? I'm just so sorry, son. This is perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Mom? Did he say anything weird or do anything? Filled up his Jeep. Green Jeep. That's right. And then he filled up some cans, like five cans. Five cans. burn the heist down. He bought five cans of gasoline. He's not going there to kill himself. He's going to burn the house down. Well, that's a relief. He's in more danger now than he's ever been. And if he tries to burn it, it will defend itself. Fuck. You really didn't hear a word I said. Yeah, I did. Now you're going to listen to me. There's a lot you don't know. But I could keep you kids safe if you didn't know. But for 20 years, I've been holding the door closed because I knew there were monsters on the other side. Do you understand me? Not even a little. Our family is like an unfinished meal to that house. And your brother is walking right back into... That house is the most dangerous place in the world for all of us. But especially for you. For me? Yeah, you. I know you saw a ghost. Yeah, chapter 19. Yeah. That little story about the vanity you painted for your mother. And you walked by the man repairing the clock, and then you saw your mother looking into the twins' room, staring at their empty beds. Textbook dissociative episode. She was not well. No, no, not her. The man repairing the clock. What about him? Do you know what witness marks are? They're scars. Little marks inside the clock. Scrapes, lines, divots from tools, gears, pieces removed from the clock. They're basically evidence oh. of repairs that have been done to the clock and, and what the clock was. And with antique clocks, you almost never have a repair record. So you have to learn how to read the witness marks so you can understand what was done to the machine and how it's meant to I knew to it. Function. I knew that guy was from the 1920s. Witness mark. The clock hadn't been touched since the 60s. Clock, there was no man there and certainly not one in old overalls with a handlebar mustache that man wasn't there you probably just for 
I never built you kids a treehouse. What? Luke was in there all the time. I used to go fetch him for there dinner. Out. Flipping a house. See there? there was no treehouse. Now, when we get there, you can have a look. But I have to tell you something. Your mother, she was not sick. She wasn't crazy. Neither was your sister. Neither is your brother. Neither are you. Oh, my God. Pauls. Whoa. That makes total sense about the treehouse. Because the mum couldn't find Luke. And Stephen said to her, oh, have you checked the treehouse? And she was like, <laughs> And then when he went up, he was like, I don't know why she never looks for you here. Because she can't see it. <gasps> it's the treehouse, the red room. Oh, my God. Play. Do you think he's... Oh, no, they're on their way now. Oh, it's yeah. over. It's... We're all going to the high ground. Going home. there. Like, now went there. Ugh. I'm not perfect, you know. I know. Yeah, we're aware of that show. I was really drunk. What did you see? I couldn't see him, if that makes any sense. You know what? Never mind. I'm trying to tell you. Listen! Forget I asked. You just don't know Surely. what I'm dealing with. You were drunk, and that's supposed to be okay? I'm telling you. Listen! I, I touched Nell's body the night before. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. Oh, I'm telling you. I don't. I'm I, trying to tell you. I don't you. need to hear your excuses. I'm not making your excuses. Bullshit. I saw my. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. I feel sick. You okay? That was her. That was her. That was her. Oh my god. I touched Nell because I had to know. You know what I'm talking about. Don't pretend that you don't. You know what happens when I touch people. A part of you knows it always has. Oh god. And I felt <sighs> nothing. Just nothing. And it spread, it spread everywhere in me, this nothing, until I couldn't feel anything anymore. I was just this dark, empty, black hole. And then I tried to mourn at the wake, and I felt nothing, and so I drank, and I drank, and nothing worked. I couldn't feel anything, surely, after I touched her skin. I couldn't feel anything. And then, and then we're in the basement, and the lights go out. And I wonder if this is it, if this is what death is, just out there in the darkness, just darkness and numbness and alone. And I wondered if that's what she felt and that's what mom feels, and it's just numb and nothing and alone. What if that's what it is for all of us when the time comes? And I just, I reached for him because I had to feel something. I had to feel anything. God, I'm so glad I did it, though. Because it worked. I started feeling things again, and I felt, I felt shame, and I felt grief, and I felt scared. So fucking scared that I was gonna lose the only sister that I had left. That thorough fucking shame was so much better than that horrible, empty nothing. I, I'm so sorry. Please. Just bleed. Come on, show. <sighs> Shit. Pause, because now I uh, I can. What the fuck with 
with that jump scare though. I've got, I'll give myself a headache from screaming. I saw stars. Jesus. <sighs> Play. Shit. Is there really going to be a fire and he's just walking in? <laughs> oh, oh my god. I'm not even joking, I feel sick. That was absolutely terrifying. And most of it wasn't scary, but the bits that were scary in that were like the scariest. Oh my God. I've got to try and do a review now. So basically this is the manhunt for Luke. And there's the fallout from Theo and Kevin in the cupboard <clears throat> and Shirley's just being super mean to everybody but is not being helped by the fact that Theo and that and Hugh don't tell anyone about the fact that they just saw the mother and she probably smashed the house and that stuff on the house is the same stuff that was on the the thing, the whatever you call it, a vanity. I think they call it a vanity in the States. I can't remember what we call it anyway, the vanity. Mm. I'm shook. I'm trying to do this review. My brain's fried. Anyway, come on. Let's get snappy with it, Care. <laughs> so anyway, it was same it was the same black dirty dusty stuff she looks kind of like even mud or ash <sighs> so the vanity in the past belonged to poppy hill who apparently was insane and so was william they met in an asylum mm -hmm. well no surprises there i'm like did they kill everybody is is that where this thing's going because now that would make sense that would make sense of the way the mum is acting. The mum is acting like Poppy Hill, I imagine, might act. <sighs> so we saw Stephen in the back, in the back flash. <laughs> Sorry, American mum, in the flashback. What is going on? Um, that's what American mum says. If you're here, you will already know who American mum is, but she's awesome. And if you have not watched her Lost reactions, I highly recommend it. Wait! Jack? Jack? Oh, Jack! Can you hear me, Jack? At the hatch. No. <sighs> Um, I'm re-watching them for like the third time at the moment. Anyway, so Stephen does that, gives them on the vanity after learning that it's Poppy from Clara Dudley and mum's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, freaks out and sm smashes her fist into the, into the mirror. So I'm thinking she's seeing Poppy Hill. A, 
anyway, so the, the Hugh and Stephen go off in search of Luke and now and not now Shirley and Theo stay home and we get the knocks at the door and sh no one's there but then Shirley turns around and that same guy again with the little glass of whiskey or whatever is is there then another one goes to Theo Theo comes in they're trying to sort of figure shit out and then it was like deja vu because now happening to Shirley's house there is the same thing the kind of thing that happened to them in um episode two remember when Shirley was in bed and Theo comes in and she's like why why are you banging on the walls I was waiting for the dad to walk in and then his mouth would go down because that was the scariest actually the scariest thing in that episode two thing was the dad going it's over. It's over. So yeah, so the whole house, it, there's you. It's clearly not local kids having a laugh. It's it's whatever the hell is going on is what's happening ghosts possession demons i don't know what the fuck but it was not kids so then in the middle of all this bling we've got a ping for luke using the credit card at a gas station on his way to hill house don't tell me that wasn't the house sending out messages that was terrifying. So they ring Stephen and the dad and they interrupt a very detailed conversation going on between them as it turns out Stephen has had a vasectomy and the reason that he's not with Lee anymore is because he didn't even bother to tell her. Their entire relationship. Two years of which they were trying to have a baby and he's not said in any of this time. I have every sympathy with the reason behind the vasectomy i really do i absolutely understand where he's coming from he's terrified he's in his world he's seen several of his family go mad and several of them now like two have died and probably a third is about to and he doesn't want to pass on genes which he, which he considers faulty he thinks he's sick his whole family's sick, he doesn't want to pass it on. So I've got, my quibble is not with the decision to have the vasectomy. It's sad that he had the vasectomy. I, I wish he didn't have to take that step. But I can understand how you would feel driven to it. None of that excuses the lies to Lee. None of it. That is outrageous. Can you imagine every month for two years she's taking a pregnancy test she's waiting to see if her period comes or not anguish that is mental torture no Stephen no no anyway so they've had that conversation and because Hugh had shared like about I thought that was beautiful his conversation about him and him and Olivia and it seems true from what we've seen actually the good you know before she gives mental anyway they tell them about the petrol station everyone realizes you know with surely shit he's on his way to hill house but this is not a pro this is not now just us sitting here going uh oh luke can't go to hill house because the house will kill him the dad is like confirmed the house will kill him we're an unfinished meal the house wants all of us and that's when we get to the bit with steve because in the past and i'm so glad i put it out so there was this one workman that we were looking at who had like this mustache his clothes looked different and i hadn't really seen the other guys and i was just thinking are these all ghosts like this feels like the 1920s or something this this guy seemed looks totally out of his time i don't think i said out loud but then i saw another man kind of walked 
towards the camera there was a guy in a sort of a check dark blue check and there was another guy which had sort of tie-dye almost thing going on and I, in my mind I was just like that that doesn't look like the same as the other guy so we've had that confirmed basically Stephen had seen a ghost the guy working on the clock not working on the clock death well working on the clock in the past what is it with the clocks anyway that was mind blown already but then we take it to another degree which is there wasn't a tree house so wherever wherever luke was going wherever stephen was following that was not a tree house it did not exist Hugh didn't build a tree house. There wasn't a tree house on the prop. What the fuck? So what is the tree house? Is the tree house? It can't be the rep. Well, it could be the rep room. I was thinking because of the way that the stairs go up. But that basically means that like whatever was happening to the mum was happening to the kids, including Stephen. Because he would have had to have an experience consistent with walking outside, climbing up a ladder into a treehouse. And we, we don't know where he was going. We know that the mum couldn't find it because, you know, I've done that. And then we go to the most terrifying thing that's happened to me since the last most terrifying thing that happened to me was in the car theo is trying to explain to shirley what happened why she ended up in the cupboard with kevin why it looked like she was kind of about to kiss him she's trying to tell the story and it all starts with her touching now um and she's you know she's trying to explain all that to shirley as well of like maybe we've like never spoken they've clearly never spoken about this properly her ability with the touch the shine and stuff and then i was fucking they start having this row and i was quite close to the t to the, the screen because i was ticking in the row and then out of nowhere it i swear i think it was now it looked like now again with the statuey crumbling face and just like a really long it just looked like a head on a, on a foot long neck comes through the middle of the both of them I am honestly felt sick with fear actually nauseous that was terrifying and then I that was a beautiful monologue that Theo gave then about you know basically when she touched now she felt nothing didn't look like she felt nothing, but I understand what she means. What she was recoiling from was nothing. It was this dark, empty, you know, floating around, disembodied thing. And that's what ended up having her do whatever she tried to do with Kevin, was just to feel something. And then since then she has felt something because she's felt all of the things that she feels for her sister and not wanting to hurt her sister. I'm really glad Shirley relented at that point. I feel like Theo's been kicked hard enough now. It was a stupid thing to do. But I, I don't think, yeah, you know, I think that's one of those things where like extenuating circumstances. So forgiven. Um, meanwhile, Luke arrives at the house and instead of the lighting, I noticed the lighting was different when it was now, it was really inviting. It was like the lights actually in the house were on. But when Luke turned up, it was like a deep, like a red. Uh, it didn't look particularly welcoming. He goes in, he puts petrol all over the foyer chucks the thing down after doing his little one two three four five six seven and woof and then nothing now 
it could be the house has somehow managed to to not have that fire happen which is you know inside of this universe completely possible my concern is that the house is on fire and it, it's keeping him in i'm really worried and then so the flames sort of like just dis just go out or don't just it was weird it was almost like you put um like a cup over it like you sealed all the oxygen away from it so it, like there was nowhere for the fire to go that's what it reminded me of if you ever like get a candle and then like put a bell jar over it or something and then it and then his mum appears at the top of the stairs and she's got this welcoming hand out and then fucking poppy i'm sure that was poppy anyway a female heel is behind him and like put her hand i mean it i mean it almost looked like she would have broke his neck i don't think luke's i don't I think that's it i think luke's done now Ugh, that was horrible but onward take a look at the time i think i'm gonna have to watch another one <laughs> until the next time bye bye